Rosa Parks and the Bust of Freedom, Chapter 11. The boycott was over, the buses were integrated, and Rosa Parks was known worldwide as the mother of the Civil Rights Movement. If only good things happened to good people, the rest of Rosa's story would read like a fairy tale. She would live happily ever after, surrounded by the people who loved and respected her. But Rosa's life after the boycott was no fairy tale. It was often difficult and sometimes even tragic. Neither Rosa nor Parks could find a job in Montgomery. Even people who supported Rosa were afraid to hire her. She had been labeled a troublemaker. Employers didn't want their businesses to become the target of an angry segregationist. Even worse, some old friends from the Civil Rights Movement were not kind to Rosa. They were jealous of the attention she received. They felt that their hard work on the boycott was not recognized. They said spiteful things to her. Oh, here's a superstar. Are you sure you still have time for us? For a shy person like Rosa, who had never wanted attention, these remarks hurt badly. Less than a year after the boycott ended, Rosa, Parks, and Rosa's mother left Montgomery. They moved to Detroit, Michigan, where Rosa's brother Sylvester was living. In Detroit, Rosa went to work in a factory, sewing aprons. Later, she was hired to work for John Conyers, a black congressman. In 1968, when she learned that Martin Luther King Jr. had been murdered in, Miss in Memphis, Tennessee, Rosa was heartbroken. The killing seemed to be the beginning of years of trouble. She broke her ankle and wrist in a fall. By the mid-1970s, her husband, her brother, and her mother were all suffering from can cancer. On many days, Rosa went to three different hospitals to spend time with her loved ones. Parks died in 1977. Three months later, Sylvester died as well. And Rosa's mother, Leona, died in 1979 at the age of 91. Rose retired from Representative Conyers' office when she was 74. Six years later, a man broke into her apartment and beat and robbed her. During the attack, he recognized her. He asked, aren't you Rosa Parks? But he hit her and took her money anyway. Most painful to Rosa was the fact that her attacker was a young black man. She told reporters after the incident, I pray for him. But there were wonderful moments in Rosa's later life as well. At the age of 80, she traveled outside the United States for the first time in her life, giving a speech to university students in Japan. When South African President Nelson Mandela, who had spent 27 years in prison for fighting against racism, visited the United States, Rosa was the person he most wanted to meet. President Bill Clinton honored her with a Medal of Freedom, and in Montgomery, along Pleasant Street bears the name Rosa Parks Boulevard. Rosa Parks died at the age of 92 in her Detroit apartment. Several close friends were with her at the end. In death, she received a great honor. Her coffin was placed inside the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Until that time, only presidents and great war heroes had lain in state at the Capitol. Thousands of mourners, both government officials and ordinary citizens, filed by the coffin to pay their last respects. She was buried with her husband and mother in Detroit. And on the day of her funeral in Montgomery, Alabama, the city of her great struggle and great triumph, the front seats of the city buses were empty. All the day's riders, black and white, took back seats in memory of Rosa Parks. And this concludes Rosa Parks and the Bust of Freedom. Thank you.